Let me take a look at what do you got? I pull into the speculation station I got. Speculation station. Uh, uh, uh. Hello and welcome to Speculation Station. Hello. Hello. Okay, now, as always, we'll be speculating on an object. And th- this can be any object that either of us have brought in. Mm. And this week, I'm this week's interrogator, instigator, invigilator, whatever, moderator, host, whatever you want to say. What's your name? My name's Tom. Oh, it is, isn't it? Usually. Usually. Okay, I have been known to go by other names. But Many generally, other names. It's generally Tom. Uh, and this is our this is this week's speculator. I'm Will. I'm going to speculate. Yeah, and he's wearing a rather fetching shirt. Oh, I'm wearing a floral shirt today, and you are wearing a kind of old school military surplus, maybe World War Two era dress coat, perhaps. Yeah, it kind of makes me feel like I'm in the trenches. I realise that's World War One, but World War Two had trenches and foxholes. They're not as sexy though. Trench, are you yeah. saying foxholes aren't as sexy as a good World War One trench? No, okay. something really wonderfully dysentery filled. Anyway, this week's object. Okay. I'm going to close my eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Oh, here it comes. It's like a mini Christmas. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Okay, ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Open your eyes. (laughs) Oh. I don't even know what it is Uh, yet. And you may never. (laughs) So, it's, um, it's a long, thin metal cylinder. I'd say smaller in circumference. I'd go with rod. Yeah, like a rod. Yeah. Like a really small flute. Perhaps a size of a piccolo, yeah, perhaps. It does look like a flute. Yeah, very much. It's really solid. It has a hole, I guess, drilled or, you know, milled through it at one end. And what looks like a couple of small metal rings around that end near the hole as well. Otherwise, I cannot discern any unique identifying properties about this. Excellent. Object. Right. <laughs> okay, this is exactly why I brought it. I have, if I had to guess the weight... And just so you know, mm. I also have no idea what this object is. Oh, interesting. So we're both at a disadvantage. Exactly. But I, I, I salvaged it and I was like, this is the perfect object for us. Just giving it a heft in my hand, oh, it so feels good. like it could be mm, somewhere between 0.5 and a kilo, maybe 0.75 kilo, yeah. I'd guess. Oh, he's doing a cool flick. Oh. Can you do that? You've got the confidence? It'll click on my rings like that. Good. Okay, put it down. Okay, put it down. Oh, no, you're allowed to hold it in your hands if you feel it. That's true. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to keep it close to my chest. Ready? Okay, okay yes. I'm ready. First question. Why is it this shape? Speculate. <laughs> I mean, first I'd have to understand what it was well, for. Well, that's up to you to decide. What is it for? Oh, good grief. It's so Come on. heavy. It can't be a part of something too delicate, right? Because no. too heavy for that. It also looks like it can't be part of something that moves too much because it only has the one hole at the top for any sort of mm. attachment, maybe. So it wouldn't be precise enough to be part of a Why fast moving object. Why shape? Well, let's say this. The classic... Thin cylinder, like you say, a rod shape, works very well. Very sexy now I can immediately... Did you say sexy or sexist? Yeah, sexy. Oh, that's better than sexist, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like I could thrash you with it. Like I could thrash. beat you with it. With a so good... why is it that shape? Because the person who made it wanted it to be this shape. Yeah, I mean, whatever. That's a, that's a really, really cop-out answer. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Do better. Because it is needed to fit into a cylindrical opening. And it gets to a certain point where these metal rings near the top end they sit okay. on top of whatever it goes so into so what's the hole for the hole is for putting a little bit of string in <laughs> so if it goes too far you can yank it back out again I mean that, that, at least I, you, came, you came up with some ideas I, I, like bet, I bet you can't come up with a better answer than no, that no no that was good right was good, good. So, 10 points to me so could you swap this for a more valuable object yes absolutely how first of all how would you sell this object so if, if I was to go to a, a stranger and I wanted to swap this for a more valuable object. So in a way, I'm selling this object. I want them to take it on. I want them to want this object. Mm. So first of all, weight and heft. It's a substantial object. Nice I would simply put it in their hands. Okay. Let them nice feel gestures it. you've got going there. Yeah, I'm really gesturing <laughs> with it, right? <laughs> Secondly... Very satisfying feeling. For, for, for most people, I'd say that, well, first of all, you could sell it as a weapon. Mm. Self-defense. It's quite concealable. You could feasibly put it... In fact, if I pull my sleeve down, I could... Literally, you can see it in my sleeve. I'm walking around town. So you're like a budget Wolverine. Yeah, budget Wolverine. <laughs> and then, pow, it comes out of my sleeve. Oh, look at that. You better watch out, big would-be robbers. I've got a bit yeah, of metal just... rod. Yeah, yeah. So is, is now, the... I'd thinking that... of it as a weapon. No, my most valuable way of selling this or swapping it would be as a pure raw material. And so what, what is it made of? Oh, I don't know. It, it looks like it could actually be steel. Yeah, I, 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 I'm pretty sure that's t- There's steel. There's a possibility that there's cheap iron underneath, but if you look through the, the milled mm. hole, it looks like it's steel. Yeah, and it through. just, in terms of 
the quality. It's it's not stainless steel and the density. But yeah, it's just yeah. So I reckon and it's not rusted at all. You could sell and that. This this was this was found outside as well. You found it outside yeah. where? In the wet. In the wet. And that's that's what you Is get. Is that a place? Yeah, that's that's what you get. I think the metal is generally quite a valuable resource, right? Raw resources themselves. Yeah, yeah. So you could melt it. Down. How much do you reckon you could get? Ah, like pounds, I was gonna, dollars, I was pence, ask, whatever. Not, not just. I'd say rather than a material cost, pertinent to the question, what could it be swapped for? What's a greater value than this you could swap for? I would say copper. Well, no, copper's way more valuable than this. That's what I mean. Copper's super valuable. I'd say maybe if I'm in someone and they had maybe a a previous generation iPhone or smartphone, Ooh. right? They weren't using it anymore. They didn't want to give it away for free. I swap it for this, and then I could probably sell that for more than this cost. So yeah, do you reckon you'd swap your way up to a billion uh, dollar house? I mean, it would take me a few years. You reckon you could do it? No. If I could, I'd already done it okay, by What now. would be a better strategy of getting in, uh, getting that million dollar house with that object than swapping? You just say a billion dollars first. I, I, it doesn't matter. Well, it does. It's a big difference. Uh, so, let's say a million. <laughs> <laughs> how would I get a million dollars rather than swapping this out for, for yeah, increasingly yeah, how valuable objects? How could you object? use that to get a billion dollars? I'll swap it for increasingly valuable objects. If I swap this for a previous generation... I said without I, swapping. Without swapping? Yeah, how would you get a million dollars without swapping using that? Okay, I, this is getting a little bit dark, but I'd, I'd find someone who's in charge of a major bank or cash deposit, <laughs> and I would threaten them with it until they give me the money or, okay. or give me an opportunity to get it. Yeah, that, that major four banks. <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> He's got a metal Will cylinder. is coming for you. He's going <laughs> to run. All right, let's move on. Okay. <laughs> Exciting. Have you got one? Well, no, categorically not. But probably laying about my possession somewhere is a metal object, probably a rod or something. You, you, might, you might even have one in something you own. A, a goodness that knows, you, because you, this you, could be a, a valuable part of something we both own. Exactly. We don't know yeah, yeah. How, how do you not know that this is missing from something that you need? I mean, probably, it could be, but it wasn't found uh, in your possession. In my possession, That's not true. in my house. It was found in the wet. Oh, it was found in the wet That's on the much street. Oh, in the street. Oh, now you're giving me more yeah, information. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. It's a bit of street uh, scavenge. Let me ask you a question then. Go for it. What from between seeing this object in the wet on the street and picking it up and taking it home, what was the mental process? What what part of your brain said, ah, oh, I need this? Do you know what it is? What? It was the, the, the heft and the weight. I was like, ha, <laughs> this feels like something I want to hold in my hands. Were you surprised when you picked it up that it had that heft? Yes, I was, I was shocked at how heavy it was. You thought it might be lighter and more yeah, hollow. Like maybe aluminium Brittle or something. perhaps, you know, yes. Like, but I, I have a, I, I enjoy Sort of playing with these kind of objects. For our American listeners, please tell us what alum- aluminium is. Uh, yes, aluminium is the correct way to say aluminium. Actually, it's not correct, it's, though. But here's the point. Yeah, you told right. me this. Yeah, no, and, uh, you, you, I said that to be facetious. <laughs> As we always do. Yeah, um, but generally, uh, the American way, aluminium, is correct. That's the original way it said. It's not correct in Britain because some clever people in Britain just said, it doesn't really sound very good, does it? It doesn't sound in line with the other elements. It doesn't sound in line with the other elements. and it, So we say aluminium because it sounds natural, sounds clear, and it matches up like titanium and other, uh, uh, other elements. Iridium. Say, yeah, iridium is another good example. Cesium. Yeah, I won't go through all of them. Francium. Is that one? Yes. Okay. It's very reactive. Well, cesium is incredibly reactive. If you put that in water, it'll explode. Fran seems like that, except it's more and radioactive. Oh, fun. <laughs> I do like something radioactive. I think. To be honest, now you've mentioned... science, if I got that wrong. Apology <laughs> science. Now you've mentioned radioactivity, it has a certain, you know, fission does, rod about it, right? It does have a little bit of that about I mean, maybe it. Maybe we're radiating ourselves. Yeah, maybe you know we're about already it. dead. Should, mm, okay. okay, moving on. So, I mean, this, this is a perfect question, and it comes in line with my discovery of it. Could you kill someone with this? Ha! <laughs> You'd be hard pressed not to be able to kill someone. <laughs> I would say. Uh, how might you go about killing someone with it? I mean, I don't want to go into too much detail because it makes me sound like a psycho. But you could. How? I actually think that one swift blow to the back of the head. Mm. I, don't, I don't know how much you know about this, but, but there's something at the back of the head that if you something where oh, maybe yeah. the base of the spine or the top where the spine connects to the cranium. Oh, it's the yes, the uh, the cortical sort of. Well, I'm thinking cortical stacks. That's uh, that's all science fiction all the time. But sure. Uh, but yeah, the, it's the base of the reptile brain. I might even be something that knocks into the back of your head. I don't. I don't remember. Also, maybe the throat, the temples. Yeah. Just I a mean, good you bashing. Stick that, you just jam that in someone's temple. It's gonna hurt. Oh. I thought you were gonna say maybe jam it down someone's throat. I mean, that would be horrible. Uh, I mean, you could also use it in a sort of. Um, you could use it to create some horrible sort of like uh, bend people's arms in horrible ways mm. or put it around their neck to garrot them. Well, now you mention it, it's not dissimilar to what you know, certainly our police use. Yes, there. it's, it's quite similar, it's except that it's a way. little less... Th- theirs are a little less violent looking. I will yeah. say, to, as, a, as an aside, 
It's one of those metal objects that leaves your skin smelling kind of like yeah. stale metal. Yeah, it does. It's very scratched if you look at the surface very clearly. Mottled, mm-hmm. scratched. Yes, yeah, so there's still a shine to it, but it's still a certain. Now, was the shininess in your mind when you picked up the object? Did you see it and go, "Ooh, well, my it was, my primal It was a metal brain. rod. I'm like, I've got to know what that is. Sure. Yeah. Have you ever done any specific wondering about what on earth it could be? Any research? Yeah, I mean, I thought you know, not no research, but I thought it could either be some kind of strengthening rod for some building work put that in concrete or brickwork to strengthen it could be part of a network mm, and things yeah. like that it could be part of some kind of machine but I don't do know. you know what it reminds me when i think yeah. about it reminds me of drum kit scaffolding oh yeah because it doesn't feel like scaffolding Sc- sometimes. scaffolding for drum kits is is pretty mm. weighty it's very solid and it has certain milled you know steel milled elements it, like the whole drum kit okay possible right moving on let's say it is could a child use this I would say especially a child because it's such a simple object. It's just a long, oh, kind of a shortish rod slash metal cylinder. Kids can turn it into anything they want. They could plant it in the ground and pr- pretend it's their flag for their fortress. They could run around chasing their friends trying to mm. hit them with it. I could turn it into anything. It could be a, a lightsaber if we want to be Star exactly, Warsy about yeah, yeah. it for sure. It could be a radio antenna can can connect contacting my military base. Yeah, I mean, yes, it could be something to beat your shit out of your friends with. Yeah, as we would, always did as kids. Uh, yes, and, and it never happened, of course. Yes, and still as adults. <laughs> yes, but violence is one of the joys of life. Is it, it is, not? especially with you. Okay, so how do you feel about this? I don't feel about this. I want emotions. It's quite an abstract. Oh, you want emotion? Yes. Let me drink a bit of vodka and then hopefully <laughs> <laughs> some emotion emotions will... will come. And uh, yes, as you're thinking about the emotions that you want to convey, mm-hmm. I want you to hold the object in your hand and maybe sort of press it against you in various ways to sort of, how does it make you feel? In which case, I'm going to just open my shirt and put it inside my oh. shirt against my torso. Mm. Oh, it's quite... It's both warm and cold because I've been holding it in certain parts of warm, certain so it just parts of cold. It's a bit sweaty. Well, let's not go that far because I don't want to think about that. Especially your sweat against my body. Oh, yes, well. Mm-hmm. How does it make me feel? If you remember, back in episode two, we talked about a gun. Mm. And a gun, it was a, it was a toy gun, it was an, air, an airsoft BB gun. But certain objects just have a certain heft and density that feels right to you. That's exactly it. It That's... feels right. And maybe it's more mm. from a male point of view. Certainly holding it in my hand makes me feel I mean, powerful. it is a phallic object. It's phallic it's not and, it's, and it's a weapon as well. So I feel strong. I feel good. I also feel confused because I really want to know what it is. Yeah, I have right. no idea. <laughs> yeah, but what could you use it for? Gosh. Yeah, you could use it for some really mundane things like, yeah. you know, using it to tie a tent peg around. Or yeah, something. yeah. Or you could stir your soup. I wouldn't because if the amount of... <laughs> Metal smells leaving on my hands, I'd be if, worried in, about... In a bind. In a bind, you could... If you're desperate and you've got no other stirring apparatus... That's true. And yeah. to be honest, when I... You use, When I use a steel... Ah, that's what it reminds me of. Reminds me of a steel to hone your knife. Kind of, yeah, yeah. I would say sharpen, but that's not correct, I learned recently. A steel is not sharpening a knife, it's merely honing the edge to make it straighter. Mm-hmm. And when I do sharpen and hone my knives, I do make sure to try and clean off the tiny metal particles stuck to it, because yes. you don't want those in your food, do you? Very Makes a satisfying ting when you click your wedding ring mm. against it. In, 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 you, say, you, know, it's got you can spin it around. Thing. Maybe I can spin it like I do pens. I yeah. used to spin pens at school in class rather than learning to uh, of learn subjects. Of course, spin yes. it around my thumb. There you go. That's not bad. It's got a really good weight oh, for it. In that. fact, ah, the podcast listeners will have no idea what's going on. He's spinning it in a mildly impressive fashion for those listeners. Around my thumb. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm pushing it around my and thumb. He's and dropping it quite a lot. Anyway, Shh, no one needs to know that. I mean, I think I know the answer to this question. Sure. Have you read about this? Ha! In, a, in an abstract way, of course, I've read about steel, I've read about mm-hmm. metal, I've what read about... about rods? S- Have you read about rods? In a way, them? I guess fission rods, like we mentioned briefly earlier, mm-hmm. fishing rods and fission rods. Fission, of course. Yeah. Of course, right. But this object itself, of course, never. It, and again, it's baffling me as to what the hell it is. I really want to know. I'm going to fire on to the next question. Okay. Who would like this? Rod enthusiasts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and who, who would, why would somebody be a rod enthusiast? Well, that's one of the interesting mysteries of life. Why is anyone interested about anything? Yes, okay. Explain. So, I would <laughs> say then, yeah. certain shapes appeal to certain <laughs> minds. Yes, that's, that's a very... Let's point. think about architecture, aesthetics, design, form, function, space. One of the things that most interests yeah. me in the world is why, when we design a house, if I put a wall perpendicular to the stairs... 
that might look fantastic. If I put that wall at a slight angle to say it looks terrible, why is that? What part of my brain says mm. that shape equals good, that shape, that equals form bad. equals bad? Yes, yeah, exactly. Right. But why Why is that? You know, who Who in particular? I'm trying to think of a particular person who's not a rod enthusiast. A scientist. Oh, I like it. Maybe yeah, like it has it. electrical angle. conductivity properties. Ooh, that's an engineer more, perhaps. Well, there's a lot of crossover there, but also because it has this hole through the top that goes all the way through the rod, through the top of it at least, you could hang it up. You could con- conduct electricity to so it. So let's say ha- hanging up on something non-conductive or, yes. or low conductivity, like a piece of string. Oh, or and also, to make it a bit more creative, yeah. a prop master for a movie set. Oh, yeah, yeah. He'd you could turn that. that into so many things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you've got Thor's hammer. You just stick a the, bit, bit, maybe bit of the polystyrene central on the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, so that Chris Hemsworth I, I, has something to feel yeah, in his how hand. How you pronounce that? Mjolnir, I think it's how. Mjolnir. Mjolnir. Probably a little better than Mjolnir. 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 Yeah. Oh, Thor's famous hammer, Mjolnir. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, Only yeah. he who is worthy can can hoist Mjolnir. Well, I can see. I see a manly gentleman like like Thor, oh. thrusting this around all sorts are of places. S- are you saying a woman could not? A manly woman like Thor. That's very sexually sexist, although Thor is pretty sexy. Yeah, Thor is naturally sexy. Objectively. I mean, close to objectively. Okay, quick, quick question then. Yeah. Thor with the long hair or Thor with the short, short hair? hair? Ah, short hair Thor. Every, everyone's <laughs> Thor with the short hair, let's be serious. But you used to have long hair, so did you not feel an affinity for a man with long hair? No. I, I, well, I, I feel a respect for those guys who can pull it off well. Sure. I know a few. Uh, I, I mean, I wouldn't say you didn't pull it off at all. But uh, I got tired of it and I, I feel a great freedom from not having... Tremendously long hair anymore. You used to get a lot of abuse for it from from strangers. Of course, as soon as you cut your hair off, no uh, cares. Barbie. Yeah, yeah, of course. Or oh Jesus. <laughs> yes, I mean the beard, Jesus. beard and long hair is instant yeah, Jesus, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, and you know that's kind of a compliment, I guess. Uh, you would know? you go back to having long hair in the future? No, probably not. I had long hair once, and I think it like did not you, suit you. No, and like you, my hair is quite thick yeah. and luxuriant, and as long hair, if it was clean and dry. It was just huge. Uh, yeah, if if yours was long, you might have a good sort of Gandalfian sort of uh, oh. look to you with your grey. Uh, We're making Gandalf an adjective. Gandalfian. Gandalfian. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's move on. Oh, it could be a magic wand as well, speaking of so, magic. What should you do with it? Steal it from you. How? I'll just take it home when I leave this podcast recording. And how would you do that? Uh, I Well, I'd hit you with it first. <laughs> and as you lay unconscious, I'd slip it into the car and drive no, no, away. That makes sense. That makes it does sense. make sense. He had to kill two birds with one stone. Okay. Or kill one of you one, with a one bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I the one bird? You're my podcast compatriot. Which doesn't make, doesn't make us fancy an expression. That's a very strange way of putting it, compatriot. Magic. I know. Well, you're wearing a kind of... It, it, your your get-up, your costume, does remind me almost of Stalinist, you know, communist, I, I, Soviet This this, this does make me feel of Stalin... You know, something they would use in the Well, they didn't have rods, right, to, in the Second World War to drive the troop, the First, well, first and Second oh, that's World War. That's true. Drive the yeah, they did use rods. Uh, There's that... The commanders had rods and a pistol. That's of. true. Mm. There's a famous joke in Blackadder. What's Blackadder for our foreign listeners? Like I said, well, Blackadder's an excellent show. Uh, it's a comedy uh, starring Rowan Atkinson of Mr. Bean fame. That's true. Okay, And uh, it's basically a historical show uh, jumping through history. And this particular one we're talking about is set in the First World War, where he's a captain with his inept... Underlings, underlings, junior uh, officers, and, junior officers and, men. and stuff, and they're 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 in the uh, in the trenches, waiting to, to and they're trying to escape the trenches because nobody want, wants to fight. They don't and want they're to cowards. die. All of them are cowards. And just as before, they go over the top to 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 fight and die. Sadly, there's a joke about Blackadder says to his 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 subordinate George, "Don't forget your rod or bat or whatever it is." Yeah. And George says, "Oh, good. Wouldn't want to face a German machine gun that's without one yeah, of those." Yeah. Quite serious, he says yeah, as yeah. well. It's quite a sad fact that we... I guess you could use it to block bullets if you were... Wonder Woman does that with her wrists. She blocks them straight up. I guess it, it's a very small Captain America shield. You'd have to be very accurate blocking <laughs> bullets. And even then it might sheen <laughs> off it and go into your face anyway. Anyway, moving on. So do you like it? I do, because it's mysterious. <laughs> it's, isn't it weird that as soon as you don't know what an object is, you really want to know something more about it? And it's just a metal cylinder. Yeah. It's just a rod. Yes. But I don't know what it is, so I really want to know. Yeah, and you would probably never know. Yes, and I hate you for it. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I brought it. <laughs> and uh, uh, and this is a good final question. Okay. Should I put this in my mouth? I want to say yes, because I want to see you put it in your mouth. Do it. Do it right now. And not just in your mouth. I want to put you put your lips around uh, it, please. Oh God, it's a know. rod. Put your lips around the rod. Put, just lick it with your tongue, at least. It might have a, a faintly electric sensation. Here he goes. His lips are parting. He's put his lips around it. 
Oh, he's, his eyebrow is, is skirting upwards. Oh, you're putting it quite far in. This is getting a bit too sexy. Okay. Taste? Metal. I mean, taste of metal. But sure. I, there is a certain pleasantness to the taste of metal. I do probably there want is. to wash my mouth out with of course. some alcohol or something yes. in a minute. Did you ever used to take those 9-volt batteries and put both ends on no, your tongue? No, I didn't. It was quite fun. No. It was quite invigorating. No. Oh, let's do that later. Okay. <laughs> hey, if you want to get high, kids, okay, here's a new way. If you want to get high, don't put your battery on your tongue. Take some actual drugs. I don't recommend taking drugs. Okay. Legally viable. And I thought you said that was the last question. <laughs> and uh, as the last question, okay, the actual last question, the actual last question. Yeah. Which country is most famous for this? <laughs> That's a bollocking question. Damn you. Which question is most famous for mysterious metal rods? In a way, like I mentioned, nuclear fission rods earlier. It makes me think of Chernobyl and the Russia. Okay, I think that's a good answer. Okay. Simple, clear answer, Russia. Okay, shake hands. Are we okay. going to shake hands on this one? Well, well done. <laughs> oh, well done. I thought that object would be a bit baffling for let's, you. Let's clink. 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 Turn to camera. Turn to camera. Would you like one of these? What is this? Please let us know. Oh, we have no, no idea. Is. If you have some idea what this is, if you're an engineer or a, a scientist or a metallurgist and you know what this is and you make these day to day, Tell us what idiots we are for not If you're a listener and you can't see it, you'll find a picture of it on the website. Please yes, take a yes. look. If you have any, yeah. even if it's just mere speculation like we engage in, please yeah, let us know. Please look. go for it because, and also tell us what you would do with it. Would you put it in oh. your mouth? You know? They would, they all would. I know you guys yeah, already. Yeah, because it's pretty, pretty hard, yeah. right? I, I, I was turned on. So thank you for joining yeah. us for episode three of the Speculation Station podcast. Thank Join you. us next time for a new object and more speculation. Happy speculating. Cheers. Cheers. Anything to add? We use those um, in, you have a C-clamp on you when you're setting up camera things and you use it to mount stuff off of Cameras or lights? Um, you, you can mount cameras and lights off something that's very famous that you usually light. Oh. It's on a C-clamp thing. I've learned something today. Speculation station. Ha, ha, ha.